Next, we come to a story that just stinks. It stinks to high heaven, Brockman, and we need to we need to bring this to the public's attention because this is just foul, a foul news story that 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 uh, that I know, you know, in that classic journalistic tradition, you want you want to to break this one wide open, don't you? Absolutely. Look, to, 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 to use that phrase that's very current at the moment, it's a shit show. <laughs> and no, oddly enough, we're not talking about the V word. Uh, we are, in fact, referring yes, that to... Comes later. <laughs> that comes later. Uh, we are, in fact, referring to a very interesting um, uh, project that's due to start in January, a three-year project that aims to, to capture and recreate smells from the past. Um, as uh, uh, the article uh, that we're linking to below says here, that researchers plan a library of scents from plague repellents to early tobacco. From the pungent scent of, t of a cigar to the gentle fragrance of roses, smells can transport us to days gone by. And now researchers are hoping to harness the pongs of the past. Oh, I do love a good, a good use of the word pong. Um, uh, to do just that, scientists, historians, and experts in artificial intelligence across the UK and Europe have announced they are teaming up for a 2.8 million euro project, uh, yet labelled Oduropa. <laughs> Odoropa, um, to identify and even recreate aromas that would have assailed noses between the 16th and 20th centuries. Um, and it's interesting, actually, as uh, Dr. William uh, Toulet of Anglia Ruskin University in Cambridge says, once you start looking at printed texts published in Europe since 1500, you find loads of references to smell, from religious scents like the smell of incense through to things like tobacco. And then also, of course, yeah, there are other smells that that that, that that, that will just immediately bring the impact of the past to, to, to you. For example, the smell of a Tudor street where people are chucking chamber pots into the street. You know, the smell of, uh, of being on board a, uh, a, a, maybe a, you know, I don't know, a Viking ship. You know, you'll have the, the sea salt, but then you'll also have the, the human sweat and all this kind of thing. The, the, it's a whole, uh, it's a whole dimension to the, to the past, which is, which is, often overlooked a little bit like music as well a little bit like childhood also we've talked about in the past um and in this instance i suppose my, my only real question is how will this library be accessible uh, and so just, will you be able to request maybe a sample smell that would be really cool you know i want to i want to know what what, what um, montezuma's palace smelled like and they'll sort of send you a little pot in the post that'd be, that'd be brilliant well, look, you, you've already had experience of this, though, haven't you? Because you used to work at the Jorvik Centre, and one of the selling points, one of the... Uh, the smelling US points. P one of the smelling points, even. The, one of the USPs of the Jorvik Centre when it opened was the, uh, the, 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 the smell of the Viking latrine that wafted past your little railway car as you went past the, uh, the, 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 the Viking having a dump in the diorama. <laughs> Um, of what became known as actually the Lloyd's Bank turd, it was found underneath <laughs> Lloyd's Bank in York. Yeah, right. absolutely. Um, no, well, yeah, but, but actually, big, 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 serious, big, serious. We, we, we'll really just talk about coprolites here rather than turds, aren't we? I mean, we ought to use the true. technical jargon. Well, no, wait, that, 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 that's technology. his name. It is called the turd. It is. That's, that's <laughs> his name. I, I promise you. Um, but, 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 but actually, in that instance, actually, that's an interesting example because what we had there was it. Um, what I say, what we had. You know, when I was working there, what was going on was that there's a, the the York Archaeological Trust works with a company who produces these smells, uh, and reservoirs are filled up by the tech the technical team uh, of the museum. So the 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 um, back of house behind the curtain boys, as it were, and girls, who um, uh, essentially disp dispense clear liquid that has these smells uh, in them, and they are sort of aerosolized using atomizers yeah. as, as the ride goes past. So I think there was there was the toilet. There's uh, I think the fishmongers was one of them. There's the smell of of a, a fire. Uh, you know, a, a, being inside a house where the, the fire and the smoke just permeates everything, um, and more general smells. You know, like the smell of the countryside, the smell of the river, this sort of thing, would just fill that. Um, that fairly large space that actually covered uh, more or less the, the space of the original excavation. So it was yeah. it was an interesting example. But in that in that case, so that that's that's a uh, you can see how that's quite sustainable because that's a company ordering large vats of smell that's definitely going to be used. And in that sense, is also turning a profit due to footfall. I suppose I'm just curious about about how this, in that sense, yeah. But would it be viable to have a library of smells that 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 you and I could draw upon, you know, through the post, perhaps? 
it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, mm. I think part of the, I think it's interesting on a number of levels. And we should say that this is uh, the European Union, uh, Union Horizon 2020 funded programme. They're getting mm. 2.8 million euro for this. Mm. Um, and it's an international team uh, that, that that's working on it. Um, I think we have to start from the point that you, you read any number of memoirs or talk to friends, family, colleagues, you know, it, it's well known that smell can be a trigger for memory, both good and bad. Mm, yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and you, you mentioned a number of uh, smells that were used at Jorvik. So, for example, most people would find the smell of a, a log fire a really attractive Mm. comforting situation to be in whereas you know the, the the smell of an open cesspit is might have the opposite effect you know um a, 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 you know anyone who's lived in the countryside will remember the smell of you know the dung being spread on a uh, on a field including what my grandfather used to call oomans um, because Umans, yeah, because my, 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 my great grandfather was a carter in Dover, and one of his jobs was emptying the uh, the, uh, the the bottom of the garden latrines and you know, night oh. soil barrels, and yeah, and so he, he used to oh, collect Umans. barrels of Umans. He used to collect barrels of Umans and then sell it to the farmers. I see, <laughs> I see. Now that's an interesting <laughs> one actually, as well, in so much as the, so uh, because obviously you have the bad smells, or let's the, say like the smells that we culturally deem to be bad, often because of yeah. clean, dirty values. But also in the countryside, yeah. there are there's smells like, for example, silage, which is actually a very yeah. quite a sweet sort of rotting smell. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, um, and also actually it's interesting that the the New York Times article that we're linking to below actually leads with a photograph of London in 1899. So it's not just it's not just things like a medieval world or a pre-industrial world. The smell of actually of of a London that that's beseeched by a smog would also be something that, that could be in this sort of collection, isn't it? Absolutely. Mm. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm looking at another article here um, that we can link to from uh, an, uh, an online site called, called The Conversation. Uh, it talks about academic rigor and and and, um, a, 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 a journalistic flair. It's dated August uh, 2019, so just over a year ago, um, which is talking about other work in the similar area. And uh, you have a, a reporter, um, in fact, for uh, BBC Two, uh, offering bystanders in a in a modern Parisian street the uh, the Pont de Paris, which is the recreated smell of uh, 18th century Paris around the time of the French Revolution, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and you go, uh, that, that was in connection with the TV series. So, you know, this, this, this is a, it's, it's an idea that's there in historical research, in historical discourse. I mean, you, um, and, and it goes back to, um, I mean, the article quotes uh, social reform and 19th century social reform of Edwin Chadwick, who said, quote, all smell is disease. Yes. There's that. So therefore eliminating mm. smell. And, and, you know, how much, you know, there's an entire industry based on smothering the smells in our houses. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. we, you know, you know we, we choose to have pets around us and everyone knows dogs and cats have their own distinctive smell, sometimes more um intense than on other occasions shall we say being delicate about it and you know you, you uh, and, and you go to any supermarket and there are shelves full of products that are designed to smother those mm. smells you know it, it it's um uh, uh, and this goes right you know we, we, culturally this goes right back to you know the medieval idea of the miasma that, that, that spreads disease Mm. Yeah, and that's sense, yeah, the idea that that that's that if you can smell it, well, actually, in, in a very literal sense, whether or not they knew it, well, actually, they didn't know it. But but what's mm. interesting is that in the in a very literal sense, smell is particulate by nature. I remember as a child when I first discovered that in primary school, the idea that if you can smell poo, then poo is in your nose. <laughs> you know, it, 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 there, there's something there's something thick about this idea of miasma. The thick in terms of the, it, it does occupy the air, um, and yeah. uh, and also the, I mean some, something that, that that also comes to mind for this story is this notion that you know, people and I'm sure people often ask you similar questions, but I'm frequently uh, asked the question. You know, w would you go back in time if you could? If you if you could, where would you go? When? You know, whence would you go? And um, I, 
my response is often not really an answer. It's more a case of I would I would go back in time if you could guarantee adequate medical support. So if I broke my leg or something, I'm not stuck in a medieval hospital, you know, trying to have it realigned or something. Um, yeah. And if you could uh, also as well do something to help deal with the initial impact of smell, because there'd be nothing worse than, say, landing in a... Uh, a Swedish Iron Age village, or what became Sweden, and um, and go oh oh, and you know people would they would spot what you you know you'd instantly be marked out as a weirdo. Also, frankly, and this is the other thing that we need to bear in mind: we would smell weird to them. You know, well, modern times that's... has a smell, and in fact, in, when I worked in Jorvik, within hours, you very quickly d didn't didn't notice the smell of even the Jorvik center. So, so we we become accustomed to smell, yeah. and we would smell strange to them. That's true. I think to, up, up up to a point. And in fact, there, there are um, accounts, for example, from the Vietnam War, that the um, the North Vietnamese Army in Viet Cong um, would smell American soldiers on a jungle trail before they actually saw them because they were the, the smell of people who use uh, cologne mm. and smoke tobacco mm. was alien to the, 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 the that particular environment. Mm. You know, um, at the same time, I think we, we can overstate perhaps, and I think this, this is where this kind of research is going to be really interesting to see, uh, you know, we can overstate um the um how how resilient how tolerant people in the past may have been to unpleasant smells i you know for example um if you just take the, the, the 16th century you know mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. people um are aware of a pomander the whether you know the, the the whether it was a cushion impregnated with a perfume that you carried in your pocket and you, you sniffed or a handkerchief or something mm -hmm. or, or, or or you know even you know the idea of a you know an orange with cloves and so on that you could sniff or, or you know it, mm -hmm. it was something to override an unpleasant smell in the environment and and, and also the the um uh, 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 you know going to the top of you know 17th century society um you look at um james the First of England, sixth of Scotland's uh, Council Blast of Tobacco, which is dated 1604. And he, you know, the language is of the period, but this could be somebody for, on an anti smoking campaign today. And the famous quote it's a custom loathsome to the eye, hateful to the nose, harmful to the brain, dangerous to the lungs, and a black stinking fume thereof nearest resembling the horrible Stygian smoke of the pit that is bottomless. A beautiful accent there. Well done. I'm not quite sure which accent it was, but the, the language seemed to demand it. Um, but, uh, you, you, you take the point. It, 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 the, it's one of the key arguments against tobacco smoking that yeah. King James puts forward is the smell. Yeah, that it's, and, yeah and this offensive. is a this is a world that's supposed to be more tolerant to smell than than, than we are today. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you know, interesting dichotomy there. Well, it is interesting. Yeah. Well, and of course, we now know that he should have just started smoking before he smelled other people smoking and he wouldn't have been able to smell it. So, you know, <laughs> it all we, comes full circle. That. And we're not going to get into the round of he, uh, to, to the realm of he who smelt it dealt it. So, no. No, no, no. no. Okay, okay. Fair enough. I'll, I'll stop short of that. <laughs> but it's a, but it's, a fasc, it's a fascinating project. And, and, uh, and, and, and you know, we'll watch with interest how it I, I, the, the other thing when I, when I read about it, it it immediately sent me back to the 1970s and the and 60s and 70s and then and the um the experiments with um scratch and sniff cinema on tv where you uh you were watching a movie or something and every so often a, a, a number would flash up on the corner yes. of the screen and you'd you had a scratch card with number you know num, num, number one dung heap or whatever yeah. it happened to be you know i know i know um, that in the in the 90s i remember there was a was it um the red nose day the charity event they had a scratch and sniff event uh and yeah. I remember. I also, for a little while, it was in it was in magazines as well. I remember, like computer game magazines, sometimes would have a smell associated with the game. It was a fad, certainly that came back in the nineties. And uh, what was interesting there is that, for me at least, all the smells kind of had the same slightly muddy, cesspitty kind of smell. There was something I think maybe about the agent that they were using to hold the smell that led to this earthy uh, undercurrent. But but I think smell technology has moved on from then, hopefully. It, it had two, two, two other quick points. Um, 
one is that I think it's interesting you mentioned computer games because as computer games become more photorealistic, more immersive, and particularly as we get into the realms of VR, mm. um, the last area, the last sense really that isn't being stimulated by computer games is the sense of smell. Yeah, that's true. Um, mm. And so, and, and, and in a sense, that, that, that actually has the effect possibly of pushing back against the sense of reality mm. um, that um, computer programmers, uh, game, game makers are trying to impart with modern computer games. And it'd be interesting to see if somehow or rather this kind of research has a spin-off into entertainment like that mm. at some point in the future. Mm. Mm. Um, I can certainly imagine something like the sound bar that people sometimes have in their homes yeah. for smell. So something that would just pick so out smells of, them. Ab, yeah, ab, ab, simple ab, ab, smells ab, ab, like yeah, burning ab, ab, yeah. or nighttime, yeah, this kind of thing. Yeah, mm. ab, 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 absolutely. Um, so, and and the other thing is 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 is, is, is perhaps the uh, dangers of this if it get if it goes wrong. Um, uh, our viewer might remember that before I got into archaeology, I worked in theatre, and mm. when I was training, well, when I was at university, um, we did a production. I took part in a production of some plays by W. B. Yeats that were based on Japanese no drama, mm. and in terms of the style, and to get the idea of a sense of Buddhist contemplation, the director decided to waft incense through the theatre's air conditioning system. Unfortunately, okay. the first experiment put, the, put paid to that idea because basically it was a huge, great, sickening waft mm. of an incredibly sweet incense smell that hit the people who were sitting right next to the uh, outlet vents of the aircon, and um, that idea was canned pretty quickly. Yes, um, yeah. because you can't. It's not. It's not. It wasn't. Certainly at that stage, it wasn't easily controllable. No. So, no. so um, subtlety. And, and, and subtlety is yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is key. Um, it's key. Exactly. And, 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 and subtlety and, and, and the intent. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't, does, have they cleaned that latrine at Jorvik yet? Does it still smell or have they put the, you know, the, the air freshener in? That's part of the joy of it. Of course it still smells. Um, and uh, I think if we, if we can, I think I'll bring bring this to a close on just one observation and that is that um working there you could also see actually i mean we touched a little bit on this already but this sort of cultural aspect of smell and different values of clean and dirty uh was very interesting to observe so so you'd have kids coming in almost all ages would go ah, initially and then within a few moments they'd get they'd forget that they were smelling a horrible smell um yeah. but actually as we've seen obviously this year it's become much more uh, normal certainly in this country for example to wear masks outdoors um often we would have um uh tourists coming in for example from china maybe from hong kong um who would be accustomed to wearing a face mask either for pollution for for pollution reasons or if they if they possibly felt that they had an illness or if you know, they didn't want to cough on people um but clear that they definitely would respond to what they consider to be the bad smell, a bit, little bit like a miasma that we were talking about, by putting on their mask as they got onto the the, the ride itself. That was I've always found that very interesting, and some of my colleagues responded to that. Uh, I think overly negatively, they sort of thought, well, do they think we all smell or something, these tourists? But that wasn't the point. They were responding, again, in a very culturally specific way to bad smell. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's an evocative and uh and powerful tool but as you say the key will be will be subtle deployments and maybe as i say i would i'm looking forward to be able to order a little you know maybe a latrine smell in the post that would be amazing from this library <laughs> but three years in three years time we've got to wait a little bit for that